to uh, welcome uh, everyone uh, who have joined us on Zoom and also people who are joining us on Facebook. I'm Faisal Saleh, the founder and executive director of the Palestine Museum US. And today um, we are very uh, excited about uh, uh, holding a virtual art opening of the exhibit, uh, The Impossible Dream. It's an exhibit of Palestinian artists, 19 artists and 33 works of art. Uh, that is actually, it's a physical exhibit in Washington, D.C., uh, at the uh, uh, Zenith Gallery uh, Art Space at uh, 1111 uh, Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest uh, in Washington, D.C. I would like to uh, introduce our uh, chief curator, Nancy Nesbitt, and uh, she will uh, take us through the next stage of this uh, these proceedings. Uh, please welcome Nancy Nesbitt. Hi, thanks so much for joining us for the Meet the Artist reception of the show, The Impossible Dream. We are happy to have seven of the 19 artists represented in the show joining us today to talk about their work. And we will happily talk about the work of the artists who could not join us today. The artists and we will answer questions, address comments, accept compliments posed today. Um, the artists and we will answer those questions and address those comments on Facebook and also on Zoom chat, which you can access during the show. So please raise a virtual glass to this very socially distanced reception and enjoy it. If you can, visit the physical space where the show is, is at 1111 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest in Washington, DC, where the public is welcome daily. You can see our website for more details and please, Wear your mask. We would especially like to thank and note our co-sponsor of the show and director of Zenith Gallery DC, Marjorie Goldberg, who has generously hosted the show at her 1111 Zenith Sculpture Space. Whereas the inside wall of the exhibition is behind museum director Faisal Sala, which you just saw, the view behind me is the exhibition as viewed from 12th Street Northwest in Washington, DC, around the corner from the entrance on Pennsylvania Avenue. So now on with the show. Okay, so um, we will uh, use the, uh, the catalog uh, of the exhibit uh, uh, and we will follow through the pages uh, talking about each artist. Uh, as we go. Before we do that, I'm going to share with you our website uh, where you can actually uh, uh, see the exhibit. Uh, th there is uh, information about the exhibit and also underneath here, there's a button uh, that says view catalog. You can click on that and that will allow you to browse through the, the exhibit catalog. Okay. Next, uh, we will share uh, a view of the uh, uh, exhibit from the street. Uh, and uh, this is what looks like from uh, 12th Street. Um, you can hear the ambient noise from the street. This is amateur photography, of course. <laughs> Hope nobody gets dizzy watching this. This is the catalog. Okay, so this is the uh, the back cover of the of the catalog in Arabic, Al Hilm Al Mustahil. And this is a list of the artists. Uh, uh, let me let me read through the list quickly. Uh, Eileen Victor Abdo, Karim Abu Shakra, Maria Eugenia Akel, Muhammad Al Hajj, Nahla Asia, Sana Farah Shara, Manal Deep, uh, Isra Ahmed Frehat, Samia Halabi, Hayaka Abne, Reem Khader, Samar Husseini, Sahar Kamhawi, Solange Diaz Marcos, Rania Matar. Namir Qasim, Taki Spatin, Amal Sobeh, uh, 
and Ruby Yunus. Uh, all these people have one thing in common, they're all of Palestinian origin. First artist is Mohammed al Hajj. Uh, Mohammed will be joining us today. Um, Mohammed al Hajj is a young Gazan artist creating abstract expressive and pop art portraits, as well as relief sculpture and black and white graphics depicting the Arab and Palestinian spirit. Granted his BA in Fine Arts at Al-Aqsa University in Gaza City, Palestine, his work has been featured in exhibitions and art festivals in and outside Palestine, including four solo exhibitions. He is here, here today and will tell you about his work and his unique technique in creating it. Mohammed? Good evening, everybody. Um talking to you from Gaza, Palestine. Uh, I'm very happy to participate uh, in the, uh, these activities of the Palestine Museum US. Particularly, uh, this uh, uh, comes uh, as part of a group of uh, Palestinians, Palestinian artists that I've come to know recently. Uh, I finished uh, my uh, study at Al-Aqsa University in 2004, studying uh, um, art education. Uh, and currently I'm involved in teaching art and also uh, I, I'm a, a practicing artist. All of, go ahead. Uh, and up till now I had uh, three uh, uh, solo uh, individual exhibits. Muhammad, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the three that you have? Because we don't have a lot of time for all artists. Okay. Of course, I worked with three different artists. It was a part of the first artists I presented in the first place. It was called Malamah Palestine in 2007. Yeah, I'm participating with uh, three uh, sculpture pieces that I uh, participated with in another exhibit in 2007. Uh, uh, this uh, three works uh, address uh, the contribution uh, and the story of the Palestinian women uh, who might have uh, uh, had their sons, fathers, or brothers, uh, or husbands uh, martyred in, in their struggle uh, for Palestine. Uh, uh, I used uh, for my uh, sculpture uh, uh, reinforced cardboard that's used in some of the architectural uh, uh, works. So, and I used uh, multiple layers to achieve the 3D look uh, to create the third dimensional look of, of the work. Uh, and I use special material to uh, strengthen the, the cardboard uh, so you would withstand some of the uh, work that I had to do with it. بعد ذلك استخدمت ألوان أكريليك وخصوصا الألوان الذهبية. Uh, I used uh, 
تقدم كشكل نهائي للعمل. Well, I use special colors uh, so that the work uh, would have the look of, uh, of a, a statue made out of uh, copper or bronze. You could see it a little bit. Uh, uh, as you can see here, is there's no doubt that these things look like they're made out of metal. Uh, but in reality, they, they are uh, made out of cardboard. Painted to look like metal. Amazing. Nancy? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Summer Hosseini. And we do have the pleasure of having Summer here today, so I'll speak very briefly um, and then give her the floor. Um, Summer Husseini is a Palestinian American fine artist and graphic designer working, creating, and living outside of New York City in West Orange, New Jersey. After receiving a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Maryland and a double major in studio art and art history, um, Husseini began her career with a 1993 art residency and solo exhibit at Darat El Fanun in Amman, Jordan. After graduating from Pratt Institute in Brooklyn with an MS in communication design, Husseini's advertising work won awards, including the Silver Award from DTC and others. Um, she, she'll be joining us today to talk about her wearables, which are magnificent um, Bemberg cloth painted designs, um, as well as her sculptures, which you can see in the show. Summer, please. Oh, thank you so much, Nancy and Faisal, uh, for this opportunity to share my work. It's really such a pleasure to exhibit with so many other talented Palestinian artists. Uh, as Nancy said, my name is Samar Husseini and I am first generation Palestinian American. I was born in the United States uh, to a refugee and an immigrant. My father, Dr. Hatem Husseini, was a political activist. He was forced to flee the West Jerusalem with his family in 1948 at the age of eight years old, and he was not permitted to return for over 45 years. My mother, Lama Husseini, was born in Jerusalem and raised in the West Bank. She taught me that the most valued uh, traditions are a sense of justice, the importance of education, and how to stay strong in the face of adversity. My family also taught me the importance of connection to our culture while showing me the positive aspects of being Palestinian. So I created these sculptural dresses to really share our positive Palestinian history. We have such a vibrant culture and really in the face of adversity, a great capacity to overcome hardships and to persevere. It's my way of preserving the Palestinian practice of embroidery passed down from mother to daughter while reinterpreting those traditions in the present day diaspora. I use tetris from Palestinian tobes that, because traditionally the embroidery of uh, these dresses indicates regional identity, the diversity of the culture and uh, the thousands of years of history rooted to the land. All of the embroideries that are incorporated in my work come from tetris that's passed down to me and tie me to my heritage. So the embroidery is really meant to intertwine into the multimedia layers of acrylic paint, charcoal, ink, collage, and gold leaf, and it's anchoring my heritage to my narrative. The color palette of my art uh, either is influenced by the tetris pieces or colors that remind me of Palestinian landscapes. And I also incorporate my father's writing. He humanized Palestinians in hopes that people would hear him and grow from that understanding. His writing from over 40 years ago still have context and resonate today. There are also Palestinian design elements like the iconic kafiya, which is traditional Arab head covering that symbolizes freedom, hope, and also Palestinians fight against uh, oppression. 
I use a special mesh wire that's stitched into the canvas to create an effect of fabric, like someone is inside filling the dress. So by taking notice of the absence of the human form, um, the Tope series really reflects on Palestinian identity and asking the question without a country or a homeland, how does one's cultural identity survive? These pieces really express to me the beauty of Palestinian culture that date back centuries and the resilience of its people to carry on despite difficulty and suffering. I also wanted to work to inspire my work to inspire cultural and socio-political awareness and create a dialogue of the history and lives of Palestinians living under occupation and those that are also living in the diaspora. It's to encourage the viewer to look beyond the media, to learn more about the challenges that are faced by a nation of scattered people who remain united by their culture, their traditions, and their love of their homeland. I'm very proud to be Palestinian, and I'm blessed to be able to share my art and awe with all of you. And again, I do really want to thank Faisal and Nancy for including me in this exhibit and giving me the opportunity to share my work with all of you. Thank you, Nancy. Ah, thanks so much. Sanafara Bashara was born in Nazareth. She lives and works in Haifa. She's currently considered to be one of the most promising artists who sculpt in bronze today, worldwide, and is one of the leading Arab women who specialize in this field. Her work revolves mainly around the woman's figure, as you can see, and she is best known for her multi-pieces sculpture from which the viewer can compose a changing narrative and perspective. Her sculptures are installed in public places, such as Saint Charbel at the Maronite Church in Haifa, the Industrial Park in Nazareth, and others. Her work has been exhibited both locally and internationally. Um, we hope you'll come and see Sana's work um, at the museum and otherwise you're um, welcome to visit it online. And uh, we're looking at the three pieces that are in the exhibit here. Uh, certainly they're quite, they all move. This one uh, moves around and there are two faces, one on this side, there's another face on the back of this. And uh, these two twist around. Uh, and uh, this sculpture is made of two pieces and you can put them closer or, or reorient them if you like. Well, Sina, yeah. um, we'd love it if you talked about the work that's behind you in your studio, which is your new work, of course, and the work that we're exhibiting in the museum. OK. يعني إذا بدنا نحكي على الفنتال اللي موجود بتقدر تحط الصورة عندك بنقدر نحكي عليه وإذا حدا بده يسألني شيء عليه اللي وراكي التمثال التمثال اللي وراكي لا اللي حبيت اللي اللي معروضات يعني اه معروضات هلا بنورجيهم اه يعني آه يعني يحكي يعني بصورة بصورة مختصرة هلا بحط انت ما فيش للوقت وإسه انت هي هي هيهم هيهم هيك يلا فإذا حدا بحب يسألني على التماثيل أغلب تماثيلي أنا بلشت بالأسلوب الواقعي شوي شوي التقسيم وهو التقسيم هو عبارة عن يعني بني آدم هو يعني منفرد على نفسه وكمان على مكون من قطع وتقدر البني آدم يقدر يغير فيهن ويغير شكلهن صار له كثير كثير رموز ومعاني اغلب التماثيل هي مودولار اللي بتقدر تحركها فكمان بالتمثال اللي على جنب ممكن يتحرك كمان اللي بالنص ممكن يتحرك وكمان هذا الدائري هو بتحرك ساعة بيكون الوجه بيضحك ساعة بيكون الوجه زعلان وفيه زي اشارة ما لا نهائية اللي بترمز لحياتنا Okay, I think we've already spoken about the fact that these uh, statues, uh, they're movable and uh, they, they have different aspects of them and the, and the viewer can move them. And uh, Sina is saying that there's a lot of symbolism uh, inherent in the design of these statues. For instance, the, the, uh, the one on the right, you know, one side of the face is smiling, the other side is frowning. Uh, and uh, and the other ones also have different aspects of them that you can manipulate um, by moving the pieces around. 
بحب احكي انه التمثيل انا اسا عم بعمل كمان زي بحث عن وغيرت اسلوبي وعم بدرس كل اللي عملته وعم بدرس عن حالي وعن طريق الدراسه عن حالي كمان عم بكتشف شغلات انه مرات الفنان هو بيكون واعي للي هو بيعمله فالتقسيم هو له معاني يعني عن كمان البني ادم اللي مقسم اللي هو نوع من ال واحد مقسم عن حاله يعني الهوية تبعته إنه جزء مني هون جزء مني محل تاني يعني إحنا الفلسطينيين مقسمين كتير محلات ف يعني إنه هذا كمان برمز لشغلات من هالشكل. yeah and uh, Sana is adding that, that the fact that these uh, statues are divided in pieces uh, kind of reflects uh, the reality of the Palestinians that each person. Uh, their life and their history is made of different phases and different pieces. Uh, and uh, this, these, these works kind of tell that story you know, and, uh, and provide a symbol for it. Uh, thank you, Sana. Uh, we'll, we'll move on now to the uh, next. Sahar Kamhawi. She's an award-winning Jordanian printmaker whose solo exhibitions at the Zara Center in Amman in 2016, they've won incredible acclaim. Then she supervised fine arts at the Ministry of Education in Amman, Jordan. She, joined her, she earned her BA and MFA at William Patterson College in New Jersey and her BA from the Faculty of Commerce in Alexandria, Egypt. As well as her art project, she's a part-time lecturer at Jordan University and makes magnificent Aquatint etchings on paper, which we were lucky enough to attain for this show. The one that you're looking at is called Urchins. Um, as you can see, a landscape made up of urchins um, against a blue background. Rania Matar um, is an award-winning, worldwide known photographer. She was born and raised in Lebanon and moved to the US in 1984. Um, as a Lebanese, Palestinian, American woman and mother, her cross-cultural experience and personal narrative inform her photography. Her work has been widely published and exhibited in museums worldwide, including the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, the Carnegie Museum of Art, the National Museum of Women in the Arts here in Washington, DC, and more. It's part of the permanent collection of several museums, institutions, and private collections. A mid-career retrospective of her work was recently on view at the Cleveland Museum of Art at the Amman Carter Museum of American Art. In her image, photographs by Rania Matar and at the American University of Beirut Museum in an image and her women. She's, several, she's received several grant awards um, and grants, including a 2018 Guggenheim Fellowship a 2017 Mello Foundation Artist in Residency grant at the Gunn Gallery at Kenyon College, the Legacy Award at the Griffin Museum of Photography, and the Massachusetts Cultural Council Award Fellowship in 2007. Um, she's published three books of her photography as well, and we're incredibly excited to be exhibiting her archival pigment print um, at the museum physically, and you can see it online. Um, a beautiful Palestinian woman in the surf in Palestine. Ruby Yunus, descended from Bethlehem ancestors. Ruby Yunus lives in Chile, exploring different styles and techniques from figurative to abstract, oil to pastel, mundane to sacred, she writes, I have felt a strong attraction for risk and chance, which hide unknown feelings that flow in watercolor technique. Where a just equilibrium between observation and meditation of nature spontaneously result from the colored water traveling over the paper. Unquote. Believing her paintings to be, and I quote from her, the most honest portrait of my soul, unquote, she adds, through color, I am able to communicate all that I live and feel, unable to be transformed into words. Magnificent work, um, their solar etchings and encaustic. Um, called ne these are called Nebula and Fractal II, and they're exhibited at the physical display at the museum, as well as online here. I hope you enjoy that work. Um, the next person we have is here today with us, Eileen Abdo. Um, she graduated in 2011 with a BA in Visual Arts from the University of Jordan, and she writes in the catalog, due to a strong sense of belonging to my Palestinian heritage, 
I tend to reflect in my art the different feelings, including security, stability, loss, and nostalgia. As Eileen is joining us today, she'll tell you now more about her work. Hi, I'm glad to join you all today and thank you for having my piece in this exhibition among many uh, great artists, as you can see. Um, mainly, if I want to talk about my pieces, I would like to uh, focus more or less on the, the emotional side of, or from where do I come uh, or bring my inspiration when I want to create my art. And since I'm um, Palestinian Jordanian uh, and I was born in Jordan, but both my parents um, lived and grew up in Palestine. And then when they got married, they came to Jordan. So I have this mixture of a visual library that, uh, that was mainly uh, inspired from what I used to see when I go back to uh, my hometown of Ramallah and I see uh, old buildings um, uh, and the architecture there versus what I see in um, um, traditional areas in Amman as well. So the combination of uh, this kind of fusion uh, made me think at some point that I, I don't like to really focus on depicting the location as, as it is, rather than just showing what I feel when I'm there or when I experience the location. So my this, this painting specifically, um, I chose to work with acrylics uh, over black cardboard um, and mainly black because I wanted to show color coming through the dark uh, tones and the background. Specifically, I'm making use of that dark tone uh, for the depth and the, uh, uh, let's say, um, contrast uh, of the composition. Uh, the, the more or less the, the, the patterns that we usually find in our traditional uh, dresses, such as the cross stitch, is evident in places, but not really in a dominant way, because I wanted to show the texture of the axis more than anything else which also implies the tradition, the Palestinian tradition in a way or another in the artwork. Um, um, uh, the painting's name is Transcripts of Land and uh, Transcript of Land. And it's part of another, uh, many other pieces within a collection that I've been trying to experiment with uh, recently. Uh, some are on cardboard like in this painting, but some are also on unprimed uh, linen fabric and canvases. And the point is I'd like to, um, um, take advantage of how the acrylic actually goes through the linen fabric and stains it and gives this kind of old traditional um, like um, fabric of some sort that is that has been found and then worked with. So I'm trying to make it look more uh, old in that sense. Um, what else? I also would, would like to talk about the actual uh, vibrant colors versus the dark tones in the painting. And as you can see, I focused on a very uh, dominant corner at the top uh, where there's extreme uh, white textured uh, brush strokes, and they, which basically imposes or uh, gives the feeling that the painting is not done fully, or maybe part of it wa was faded out due uh, like over the years and stuff like that. So I, I hope that uh, you like the painting and I'm again very happy and pleased to be part of this group and this exhibition. Thank you, Mr. Faisal and thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much. That was wonderful as is your work, of course. Um, the next person that we have is Karim Abu Shakra, um, whose very, very large painting, you might notice this 49 inches by 116 inches wide, um, is on display in the entering lobby of the exhibit. Um, born in Umm al-Fam in 1982, Karim Abu Shakra was raised in a family renowned, renowned for its passion for art and creativity. He was especially influenced by the artwork of his late uncle, Asem Abu Shakra, who continuously supported his passion for art and his talent. Abu Shakra's work is inspired by bits and pieces and fragments of his childhood memories, which reflect his deep connection with nature and his surroundings. As he's here today to join us, he'll tell you more about the work. Thank you so much. Yeah, Karim will speak in Arabic and I will try to translate. Uh, he's saying hello to all the uh, artists uh, and the guests. 
طبعا بداية يعني أنا بحب أتشكركم على هذا الجهد اللي أنتم بتقوموا فيه من خلال أنكم أنتم تحاولوا أنكم تظهروا قدر المستطاع من خلال الأعمال الفنية للأعمال للفنانين الفلسطينيين من كافة المناطق. He's appreciative of uh, the efforts uh, of the museum and uh, and the team uh, in in trying to uh, uh, exhibit uh, and celebrate the uh, the work of Palestinian artists. طبعا كريم أبو شكرا من مولد مدينة أم الفحم لعام 1982 اللي أم الفحم اللي هي موجودة بالداخل المحتل. Yeah, uh, he he was born in Am Al Fahim. Uh, which is uh, a city in the northern part of occupied Palestine. Uh, and it's a major uh, Palestinian city there. The four uh, pieces that we have at the museum, including this one we're looking at now, uh, was uh, part of a series that I worked on in, in 2015, 2016. Uh, طبعا انا تاثرت من خلال لوحات حياه عمي عاصم وانا كملت مسوار مشواري فيها لكن باسلوب جديد yeah and uh, the painting we're looking at we're looking at is part of a series of paintings that i did uh, showing uh, the cactus plant and uh, which is a palestinian symbol and i was uh, influenced by my uncle Asim, uh, who has done uh, uh, work uh, with with this uh, with the cactus and I'm continuing the, uh, his efforts uh, and, and taking them further with my own style. بس بالأعمال الأخيرة أو بشتد بحاول عمالي قديش بقدر إني أشتد إني أحاول إني أخلق نبتة الصبار بهيئة جديدة بظروف جديدة بشكل جديد لعل وعسى كمان أنا قلتها قبل مرة لعل وعسى إنه أخلق حالي جديدة من خلال نبتة الصبار وشكرا yeah. جزيلا والف شكر لكم. Yeah and I'm recently I've been trying to uh, to recreate the the uh, the cactus plant in a different style in a different way uh, hoping that by doing so um, I'm I'm helping our people uh, move into a, a different way in a different uh, environment in the future and thank you so much for uh, your attention. I think next we're going to have Isra Ahmad Freyhat because she is here today. Isra was born in Nablus, Palestine in 1990. She later lived in Janine where she graduated from high school. Moving to Ramallah in 2009, she attended Palestine Technical College and earned a diploma in contemporary arts in 2011, subsequently studying at the International Academy's Visual Arts Program, where she participated in local exhibitions. She moved to Bethlehem, where she now resides since 2015 as, and has participated in several exhibitions. As Isra has been nice enough to join us today, I'm happy to introduce her to talk about her work. Isra, please. لوحتي هي اسمها برتقال يافا شاركت فيها معكم في محل الفن الفلسطيني استخدمت في اللوحة مواد متعددة استخدمت الصوف في اللوحة ايش تختار ايش الصوف؟ صوف ها؟ اه الصوف استخدمت في اللوحة هو لربط هولا سكند ذس I'm going to talk about, she's talking about her painting and she says it's called, uh, you know, Jaffa Oranges. And she, uh, one of the materials she used in this painting is, uh, is wool. Kamali hala bala. استخدمت الصوف في اللوحة لأربط الأعمل بعد في اللوحة بعد جديد شخصي بين مدينة يافا والبرتقال. 
معظم اعمالي هي عن التوثيق للبيوت القديمه في فلسطين وتوثيق للنباتات كمان بحب ارسم كثير النباتات بصراحه لوحه كثير حلوه بحبها و... وعم وعم بدخل في اعمالي حاليا المواد متعدده مثل الاسمنت الصوف الورق القش يعني عندي سلسله اعمال Yeah, and I've been trying to uh, introduce new material in my works, uh, including cement, uh, straw, and I also like uh, plants. And uh, as you can see, this painting incorporates some of the plants that I, I think, and I really like this, uh, this particular painting. Okay, thank you. Yes, Isra, I do too. I think your painting is absolutely beautiful and thank you for doing that. The next person that we have um, joining us today to talk is Namir Qasim, born in Jerusalem in 1984, holds a BA in Fine Arts from Al-Quds University, earned in 2007. An art teacher and art workshops instructor for children, Namir has participated in several group exhibitions, as well as a charity dinner in Amman, Jordan in 2004, where the proceeds were donated to students from Al-Quds University. Um, one of her pieces was presented as a gift to Queen Rania al-Abdullah um, of Jordan. Um, she participated in the design and creation of the mural on the walls of Yabus Cultural Center during the 2011 Jerusalem Festival. Her painting Zag Zaga Reed was featured in the opening ceremony of the Palestine Museum US in 2018. That's the painting that you see on the left um, as it was just exhibited. Um, as Namir is here today, I'm happy to introduce her to talk about her beautiful work. Yeah. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Beautiful. Marhaba, work. Faisal. Yes. Thank you. Masa uh, al-khair, keep from Anna Namir Qasim. Good evening. I'm Namir Qasim, uh, and I'm from Jerusalem, and uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody. Go ahead. اللوحتين اللي مشاركة فيهم هم من سلسلة أعمال معرض رقص سنة 2017. The two pieces I'm uh, uh, participating with are uh, from uh, an exhibit about dance uh, from 2017. Yeah. Uh, المعرض كان بعنوان رقص وهو أعمال مستوحاة من فرقة الفنون الشعبية للرقص الفلسطيني. It was um, inspired by uh, uh, the uh, Palestinian National Dance Troupe. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the the two uh, paintings talk about the dances that Palestinian women perform. Um, yeah, the is the the type of uh, singing the yodeling, uh, if you will, that the Palestinian women do at uh, various uh, social occasions, such as uh, weddings and uh, the like. Uh, 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 yeah, the, the second painting that's titled Enough uh, basically delivers a message uh, about the uh, discrimination and uh, uh, oppression that Palestinian women uh, and other women around the world are uh, exposed to and subject to. حبيت أوظف أسلوب جديد في رسم التراث الفلسطيني والرقص الفلسطيني وأدمج المودرن آرت والألوان المفعمة بالحياة بالتراث الفلسطيني لحتى يكون أكثر أتراكتف أكثر مشع هيك وملفت. Yeah. 
Yeah, I uh, tried to uh, mix the traditional Palestinian uh, dance art uh, with the modern uh, vibrant colors. Let me tell you that Taki Sabatine is a realistic landscape artist born in Hussan. His show Land, Holy Land at the Zaya Gallery in Ramallah um, in December 2015 provided a very unique and very important perspective on the current state of the Palestinian countryside and environment and pays homage to the beautiful and extremely varied nature of the Palestinian landscape. His desire to study and practice art stemmed from his relationship with the land of his ancestors, his birthplace of his son, and nearby Batir are part of a phenomenal tract of land that is considered by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site, which is at risk. His work is a solid addition to the well-established genre of Palestinian landscape painting, with work identified by delicate strokes and near-perfect depictions, as you can see in his beautiful painting, A Beautiful Palestinian Day, exhibited at the museum. I'll ask Taki to talk more about his work. Uh, إنها تتميز بالتنوع التضاريسي والمناخي والجمالي واللوني. Uh, this piece, uh, uh, as we said earlier, a beautiful day in Palestine, represents uh, the diverse uh, Palestinian topography uh, and beautiful uh, landscapes. تفضل الله تاكي تمت. فهون صار في عندي اللي هو شغف بانه انا ابلش ارسم واوقف هاي اللحظات الجميله اللي هي بتتكون فيها كل محتويات الارض الفلسطينيه من قداسه والوان I have a passion uh for taking uh, these Palestinian uh, uh, holy scenes and, uh, and trying to freeze them uh, and, and depict them in, in these nice colors. رسم الطبيعة الفلسطينية في 2014 تقريبا رسمت ما يقارب ال 40 لوحة لكن أثناء الرسم أنا غيرت الموضوع لشو عم بيصير بهاي الأرض فبلشت اللي هو أصور الصور وأخزنها من شان التغير الملحوظ في التكوين الطبيعي لهاي الأرض بلش يروح بفعل اللي هو جرف هاي الجبال وقمع رؤوسها وبناء العديد من المستوطنات الإسرائيلية على رؤوسها وسفوها الجميلة. Yeah. So uh, I started by uh, painting uh, about 40 uh, of these landscapes, uh, but then as I went along, uh, I uh, decided I, I wanted to uh, uh, document the change that's taken place to these beautiful hills and mountains. Solange Diaz Marcos was born in Argentina in 1976 of Chilean parents. Solange Diaz Marcos was four months old when her family became political exiles in Switzerland and lived there for 28 years. Her maternal grandfather, Jorge Marcos Jacquet, was of Palestinian origin from Bethlehem. That powerful cultural mixture, she says, strongly influences her work. She's a feminist visual artist whose work is copyrighted and has been managed by Creol Majen Chile since 2019. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing Solange Diaz Marcos to tell you about her work as she's been lovely in joining us today. Solange, please. Um, um, first of all, I apologize for my English, my poor English, and I don't speak Arabic, unfortunately. Uh, hello, Faisal. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to be uh, here with uh, all of you. I'm proud to be to be here. Uh, so as you say, my family is descendant from uh, Bethlehem. Uh, my family goes, uh, was from the first uh, immigration uh, early uh, 19th century. Uh, my illustrations are mainly about uh, immigration and uh, exile. 
Uh, I am currently preparing an uh, acrylic exhibition, uh, acrylic on Canva, about my uh, family's uh, immigration from Palestine to Chile, uh, from Chile to Argentina, and then from uh, Argentina to uh, Switzerland. And uh, each uh, illustration is a tree, and uh, this tree is chosen in uh, relation to where it is. So. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the, uh, the, the third uh, tree is uh, from Argentina. Uh, uh, its name is Exil and uh, represents the travel from, uh, of my mother uh, to Chile, uh, to uh, Argentina. Uh, the, the first uh, tree is uh, about uh, Gaza, the situation in Gaza actually. And mm -hmm. uh, the second is a uh, uh, tree of life uh, about uh, Bethlehem and the uh, woman in Bethlehem. Yeah. Uh, I would like to say thank you to, uh, um, to um, Oh, sorry, <laughs> to Sarah Grimaldi uh, from the uh, Café de las Mujeres in Chile. Now he, uh, she is in Italy, but uh, she was the first in believe, uh, to believe in me, uh, to believe in my works, uh, where I had my uh, first uh, exhibition last year. Thank you so much, Solange. Your work was, is absolutely beautiful. And <laughs> thank you to you. Yeah, yeah, very sorry. <laughs> Emotion. Yes, no, no, that's great. And you're an artist and your English is excellent. So thank you for joining us and speaking about your work. I would like to just mention the um, people who were not able to join us today, but whose work is in the show. Maria Eugenia Akel, um, who is uh, who comes from Santiago, Chile, who we spoke about. Um, Nala Asia. Um, who's an artist born in Tulkaram, occupied Palestine in 1996. There we go. Um, now residing in Amman, Jordan. Um, she's a graduate of the Fine Arts Center in Jordan and held her first solo exhibition in 2012 and the second entitled Nostalgia for Light in 2015. All right, you're looking at her beautiful work, um, Immigration. I wish you could see it up close because the texture of the lines is absolutely astounding. Um, she's yeah. also won awards in writing short stories um, and participated in many local and international exhibitions and exhibits with the Jodar Artistry Gallery in Amman, Jordan. Reem Kadar, um, Haya Kaabneb, Samia Halabi, um, Manal Deeb, who lives in the United States in Fairfax, Virginia at this point and is represented in the, um, in the exhibition, of course. And you can access all their work um, on our site as well as at, on the in the catalog. Um, we welcome you anytime to the exhibition. It's open um, seven days a week. And uh, at this point, I would like to thank um, the people who put on this exhibition, who we could not have done it without. And the first and foremost, of course, is the artists who contributed their work and allowed us to show it in Washington, DC. Um, also to the founder and director of the Palestine Museum US, Faisal Saleh, for his unerring commitment to Palestinian artists and to showing their excellent work. To Marjorie Goldberg and Zenith Gallery, for recognizing the talent and quality of the work of Palestinian artists displayed at the Impossible Dream and for Zenith Gallery's co-sponsorship in showing the art. To Izzy Ioni and Susanna Lessie at Zenith Gallery for their work in making this show happen. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed. Yes, yeah, I, I would like to recognize a friend of mine who uh, joined uh, uh, as a guest here, uh, Eleanor Shapiro, who uh, she and I attended college together in the 70s, and she had a chance to visit me in Ramallah when I was living there uh, and got to meet uh, my parents there. Ellie, would you like to say something here? There, there I'm you amazed. Go. What an incredible project. It's the, the artwork is fantastic. It's so exciting to see this. It's so exciting to see this museum. And the quality is incredible. Just incredible. How do I get a copy of the catalog? Um, well, uh, you can order one online uh, starting tomorrow.
Good. Yes. And also, I have friends that are Palestinian artists. How do people find out about how to apply? Just send me an email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you can or go to the website under contact. You could send a message also. Mm -hmm. Do we have Okay, thank you all so much for your work. Thank you for coming to the party. Um, Amazing. Do we have Amazing. any more um, questions, comments, or compliments? <laughs> No, it's really an amazing project. Amazing. Thank, Thank you again you. to all the artists, to the audience, to the sponsors. We couldn't have done it without you. Thanks so much. Ron Faisal, كان كتير حلو إنك أنت بتعرف الجميع على عمل الفلسطينيين وكل فلسطيني بيشتغل بطريقة معينة. بس أنا حاسة إنه في إشي مشترك بين الكل. يعني التنوع هو جزء من كل واحد بيسقل شخصيته أو بيعمل بطريقته بس في إشي مشترك للجميع وأنا حاسة هذا الإشي يعني في yeah. yeah Sana believes that uh, uh, that we have seen uh, examples of a lot of uh, art from uh, different Palestinian artists here and uh, each one has its own kind of style and stamp but uh, she feels that there is something in common to all of them and uh, Yes. And, and, and that 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 is Palestine. Yeah, the um, people cannot be separated from their identities, and their identity shows up in their work either consciously or unconsciously. And uh, it creates that feeling that uh, a lot of these things have in common. Thank you. So now, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Wow, Faisal. Yeah. Thank you to you. Thank you all. Okay, well, thanks so much. And uh, I hope you would join us uh, for our other programming every, every weekend on Saturday and Sunday, we have different programming. And once you sign up for one of these, you'll get on our email list and you'll be invited to all future events. And uh, we hope to see you. Thanks all right, so thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll see you again.